join WLJC for this year's Fall Telethon from October 28th through November 9th, live six nights a week at 7 p.m. As you're watching, you will enjoy the performances of many local bluegrass and southern gospel singers each night. We will also be featuring your favorite guest host, who will be sharing the financial needs of the ministry. It's all, you know, our opportunity and our privilege to be able to do something back. You know that one scripture says, What shall I render unto the Lord for His goodness to us? Well, we can keep this uh, place going because there's so many, uh, so many that is uh, being blessed and saved and healed and delivered through here. When you support WLJC, you are bringing the gospel into homes around the world. Thanks to your contributions, we continue to provide a unique television ministry that features local Christian musicians and churches, giving them a voice to shout out the gospel. WLJC continues to be a beacon of hope and a ministry to those that aren't able to go to church, those in nursing homes and hospitals, those that are lost and in need of salvation. So take this opportunity to make a difference. Help those in need of comfort and in prayer. And help WLJC share the gospel of Jesus Christ. The WLJC Fall Telethon will be airing from October 28th through November 9th, Monday through Saturday each week. You can watch live online at WLJC.com or with your local television provider. He walks with me And all the birth shall harm me Thank you, Jesus, for I'm sheltered in Good evening and welcome to our uh, next to the last uh, revival service. And so we want you to stay tuned and, and uh, pray for us and do what, do, let's do what we can to worship the Lord. We have a group of singers that has driven a long way to be with us and uh, we'll also uh, have a, a preaching a little later and, and we have uh, a church uh, group up there on the phones right now and they're going to take your calls and answer your questions if possible and so we're going to do do what we can to uplift the name of the Lord and uh, we have uh, someone celebrating a big birthday today and that was Nita Eggers uh, from Somerset and uh, she's 88 today and uh, so uh, she called me uh, a night or two ago and and was telling me about that Time Warner, uh, the cable, had taken WLJC off of their, uh, she could not get it. Well, today was her birthday, so while some of her uh, family had her out celebrating, some of her, f another part of her family went to the cable company and got her the little box that uh, she needed to hook to her TV, so tonight she's watching. So happy birthday, Miss Eggers. And... Uh, that uh, brings me to uh, tell you that we have been in contact with uh, Time Warner uh, Cable Headquarters. And so we found out why that uh, WLGC, along with other, other stations, have been uh, pulled temporarily. We're not off of their lineup, but right now, if... Uh, if you have a friend or someone that's not getting uh, a WLJC because they need this uh, little box, digital box that you hook up. Now this is the message from the uh, headquarters of Time Warner Cable. They said right now you have a free box waiting for you to hook to your TV. All you have to do is to get in touch with them. If you cannot uh, get out and go get the box, they will uh, ship it to you or th they'll do whatever they can 
to get it to you. But they uh, also gave us a phone number for you to call and tell them uh, where you are and everything. And, uh, and right now, that box is absolutely free. And you will have it for uh, one year before it starts ch uh, costing you anything. In 2015, they will start charging you $1 um, a month for the use of this digital box. But since there are so many older TV sets and uh, equipment, they're trying to get everyone to go digital. Since the TV stations have been forced, we, you know, all of the TV stations have been forced to go digital. They're trying to get the customers also to hook up, and that's where this little box, that's the reason for it. So if, uh, now the number is on the screen right now, so I hope you're uh, writing this down, and, and if you, uh, for some reason, can't uh, get it down while we have it here at the phones, Dottie has it upstairs tonight, the, and the staff has it uh, on the different phones. We want you to get that box for your family or ever who you know that is missing WLJC. This is really a bad time for this to happen because we're during in a revival and we're starting in the telethon next week and we need to hear from all of our friends. So if you know someone that needs a, one of the little boxes, if, we, if WLJC has been taken off of their lineup, then all you have to do is to go pick up this little digital box, hook it up, and then you'll be able to pick us up again. And so when you call this number, if they tell you anything other than that the box is free, you need to contact us. You need to give us your name and address and phone number because uh, we want to look into it because the headquarters of Time Warner says it is absolutely free right now. You will not have to pay anything until 2015. So that is good news. And so as you see the number here, uh, this is customer service number 1855. This is the toll free number. 286-1736. And so I really hope that you can help uh, the ones that you know have kind of lost touch with us right now because of, uh, of this. Uh, it's kind of upgrading. You will be able to have a better picture. You will, it will, it's really, uh, it's of course inconvenient right now, but it's going to be a better thing because you're going to be able to get better pictures and from the, from the station. And so uh, if we can help in any way, you be sure and let us know. And because we're going to continue to stay in contact with them until all of our viewers is happy. All right. And uh, you pray for us. This is just a kind of a rough time for this to be happening. But God's going to somewhere or another work this around for our benefit. Because he's promised, Romans 8, 28, for all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called uh, by him. So uh, this is not a good thing within itself except that you'll be able to get a better picture. But and if you have any more questions you can call and we'll do our best to to uh, see if we know the answer. If we're not we have we have some people that, that can tell you. All right we're going to pray and we're going to let the singers get up here and get started because they have driven a long way to be with us. So let's pray. Father in Jesus name we thank you that there is a way for these people to continue to receive WLJC. And we pray that you will help us to be able to get the word to them on how to get their box and that it will be free and uh, they can get it hooked up and, and be receiving the program that they are missing right now. So Lord, help us to be able to see this accomplished. Now we pray for this service tonight. We pray for the singers. They've driven a long way and some of them not too well, but we ask you to bless them and anoint them and the phone operators and the preaching and everything, Lord, we're going to do to our best because we know that someday we will stand in judgment and you, you all, we will give an account for our time, our talent, our money and everything that we have. And so let this be a service tonight that you will have been pleased with in Jesus name. Amen. All right, tonight we are happy to have the Monday Family Gospel Singers from Liberty, Kentucky, 
and they do have CDs uh, for sale. Right there's one of them, and with some good pictures on it. Eight. Uh, the phone number is 606-787-2806. So let's uh, just go over and welcome the Monday family from Liberty, Kentucky. Savior, what you have me to do? He said, My son, just listen, and I will guide you through. I knew that very moment that I had been set free. So, friend, if you will hear him, he'll save you just like he saved me. I saw God on the highway, I saw God last night, how do I know that it was Him, because He gave me the light, so sit at me hear that preacher, listen to what He says, just walk up to the altar, fall down on your Walk up to the altar, fall down on your knees and pray. You know, his next song we're going to be singing, my brother Dwayne wrote it, and he, uh, the Lord gave him the words to it, and he said he just more or less just put them down on the paper, and the name of this song here is uh, called Go Get My Children. And we like to send this here song or send the whole program out for to the church that we go to down there at the Russell Springs Tabernacle and all of them down there and everybody we could think of, Brian, Melissa and Bethany and Junior and his family, we like to send it out to Verney. We like to send it out to everybody. Would you go home? If the Lord was to call you, would you take his hand and forget about man? He's the one who breathed the breath of life into your soul. 
So get ready, my friends. It's just about to end. Go get my children and bring them home to me. They lay bird down there enough, and I want them to be free. They have each other, but that's not enough. So go get my children, for enough is enough. We will fly to the beautiful city where the walls are jasper and the streets are for gold but this won't be all and he gave us a white robe his name is Jesus and he's calling us home Go we'll get my children and bring them home to me. They labor down there enough, and I want them to be free. They have each other, but that's not enough. So go get my children, for enough is enough. So go get my children, for enough is enough. All right, this next song we're going to be doing is uh, what me and Marlene does. Is That's my wife over here. And i like for her to send somebody out a song, too, while we're up here, so I'll let her say something. This goes out to my sister-in-law, Edie. I hope she's feeling better, because tonight she was uh, sick. So uh, it goes out to her. I'd like to send a song also out to uh, there's a We run into a couple uh, from, from Tennessee. His name Rick and Becky Brown. And I told them we'd send them out a song from... Uh, they was up there at uh, Alexander up there at that Heritage Day. So uh, go ahead, John. I just wanted to send that out to him. I told him would. We like to send this out to uh, Hattie Keith. That's my wife's mother. And, you know, it's very good to have people that that watches the show and she's one that watches the show 20 foot about every every night she's in here watching it and, you know it's good to be able to have someone that uh that the station can help and i know it's helping them and like if y'all just listen to the words lord prepare me be a sanctuary
This next song Brother Gilbert wrote, and that's the main reason why we came tonight. We thank God for the shut-in people, and we're here for you. And if you're out there and this is your church, then we hope you get a blessing. But Brother Gilbert wrote this next song to simply ask, Have you met the loving Savior? And I'm going to ask you the same thing. Have you met the loving Savior today? His name is Jesus. That's the only reason why we come. That's the only reason why we do we do whatever we do is so someone else would get saved. But that, we're just playing on that because there's only one way to heaven, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's right. But anyway, I also like to send it out to my wife, Edith Mundy, down in Case County. And I thank God for the place we work. And Amen. we ain't going to go there yet. But anyway, you know, have you met the loving Savior? And I just like to keep that in your mind, in your heart, because we don't talk to the person, but we try to talk to the soul. But have you met the loving Savior? I'd like to also send this out to uh, Creek, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Creek Moore from out there at Dialysis, Di- Dialysis there at uh, uh, Burnside. Burnside. <laughs> and, <coughs> excuse me, I'd like to send also out to my wife you know she's listening she's home sitting home herself tonight so love you sis Have you met the loving Savior? Have you met one saint today? Have you been down on your knees? Crying, God, forgive me, please. Have you cried, God, forgive me? And see, so I have you met the loving Savior, the one who set you free? reward for you have you cried God forgive me it's in the light so I can see have you met the loving Savior the one who sets you free the one who sets you free This is another song that Dwayne wrote, I believe. It's called Don't Take For Granted. And 
Well, we like to send this out to Dwayne's talking about the work people that he works with. You know, I got some good people I work with too down there at Neats and uh, in Dunville. I like to send everything out, the whole program out to them. You know, I had a little issue a while back, and God took care of it. And you know, it's it's good to be able to do something for the Lord. Whenever you get a blessing from the Lord, He's always there. A minute ago, I was saying I thank God for where we work at. We work at Just Family in uh, Liberty, Kentucky, and uh, it's a adult day program. About six or eight years ago, we wrote a song, and it's talking about uh, I thank God I can see, and thank God I can walk, and all these things, and thank God I can talk, because there's some people that can't talk there, and some can't walk, and all these things, but you know, I'm also glad that I can walk and talk spiritually, and but that's what it's all about. But anyway, you know, it's "Don't Take for Granted" is the name of the song, and I never want to take for granted. You know, I don't want to take for granted because you know, spiritual or natural. Because I thank God I can see naturally. I thank God I can see spiritually. But anyway, we have to listen to the song. Lord, I want to thank you because I can walk. Lord, I want to thank you because I can talk. Lord, I want to thank you because I can see. You put in my heart, now I believe. Don't take for granted what Lord has given you. Don't take for granted your church plants or shoes for the Lord has given the best that you can give. You need to never forgive. Thank you for my house and I thank you for the call. Thank you for the job and I thank you for the Lord. But you saved me, and I am free, and I'm going on, singing your song. Don't take for granted what the Lord has given you. Don't take for granted your shirt, pants, or shoes for the Lord has given the best that you can do, you need to never forget. You need to never forget. You know, a song here my wife wrote, you know, she was having a bad day one day, and I, I let her testify about it if she wants to. Go ahead, honey. I was uh, I had surgery on my knee, and uh, it didn't did go good. And so I was sitting there feeling sorry for myself. And my husband came to my bed where I was at one day. He said, "I got a song for you, a title." And so I said, "What?" I never had wrote a song before. And so he gave me the title, and, and he's a truck driver, and he took off and uh, he uh, went on his way. And I sat there and I cried and I didn't have to because I don't know what in this world to do. So anyway, I called him and I says, Johnny, I says, give me at least one word to this song so I can know what to do. So I went to my kitchen table and I sit down and I said, Lord, you're going to have to do this for me because I cannot do it. And so uh, I still got a pencil on paper and I just started writing. And the Lord is one that wrote this song. And I just give all the praise to my God. And I want to go and do this for my mama. Hi, mama. I love you very much. We like to do this for uh, Donnie Bunch and Johnny Crew and, like I say, all of them at the church. I want to send this out to my baby sister. She is with my aunt. And I want to send it out to my aunt and my uncle and my Bless cousin Lord. and my other cousin. Bless her, Lord. Ready? She's sick. My baby sister singing her. Just. Okay. 
want to thank the Lord that I have my baby sister. Lord, I'm sitting here all alone. Can't do nothing on my own. I feel like you have left me, but I know you can. This next song is One Day Religion, and Brother Gilbert wrote it, and we're doing most originals tonight. The Lord gave them to us, and we believe in uh, giving them out. But if you're trying to do One Day Religion today, the only thing you're going to do is send you to hell because it has to be salvation. And you have to get all the way. The Bible says, once they endure to the end, the same shall be saved. But anyway, One Day Religion won't do you a bit of good. But right. you got to go all the way. And you have to have a personal relationship. I can pray for you, but I can't get you there. You can pray for me, but you can't get me there. It's, right. a, it's a personal relationship in between you and God. But one day religion. I'd also like to send that to uh, the Casey County senior citizens up there. Oh, my Jesus, can you take me wherever you go? And not be ashamed to let your friend know. Sing about Jesus and mean it with your heart. And know someday you'll meet him, and though you'll never part. One day religion. And one day prayer My friend It will never Get you anywhere Gotta get seven day religion And salvation too So if you accept my Savior He'll accept you
will be ready to meet him And know oh, what a wonderful time One day religion and one day prayer I pray that we'll never get you anywhere Gotta get seven day religion Amen. Name this next song is the door. And most doors or most churches has doors. And the Bible said that Jesus, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, I'll come in to him. You have to open the door yourself. But anyway, the name of this next song is The Door. We we'll just actually listen to it. There is a door in every church. Got to turn on to go in. It's a place to go to get out of the rain. It's a place to go so we can breathe. When I told the Lord, when I was saved, do what you want me to, till my dying day. When they called me to preach, I was scared of that. I said, be a doorkeeper, if you take me back. There is a door in every church got to turn the lights to go in It's a place to go to get out of the storm It's a place to go so we can pray Well, he saved my soul I started back again I can tell you, I have no sin in order to be. Turn witness of the light, stay out of darkness, and shine real bright. There is a door in every church, gotta turn it on to go in. It's a place to go To get out of the storm It's a place to go So we can pray It's a place to go So we can pray Next song, Brother Ricky Johnson wrote Name of it, Soar Like an Eagle We'd like to send this song here out to uh, Bob, or let me try it again, Danny Wardrop, one of the guys I drive a truck with. I'd like to send it out to uh, uh, my other brothers, Jeff and Junior, if they're listening, which I'd like to send it out to them. We'd like to send it out for... Uh, to everybody out here today, you know it's good to be like keep, I keep saying it's good to be able. To, I'm honored to be here tonight on the radio state or the TV station, and it's good to be able to be in the revival with you all because that's what the world needs is revival. And, you know, whenever we get, whenever you get down, that the uh, the word. It's good to pick you up. Man. You ready to what, Larry? Yep. I'd also like to send it out to Junior McFarland, Ellie McFarland, and Sam McFarland. And I don't know if Ashley got all the way through it a minute ago or not, but I'd also like to, uh, my wife's aunt is the one that's got our, our uh, 
the one that's keeping her littlest child tonight. And her birthday's tomorrow, and I'd like to wish her, wish her a happy birthday. And send this out to her, too. And I also want to send this out to all the teachers that's watching at our school. I would like to send this song out to uh, Teresa uh, and Pam. I can't sing the original song because we're getting out of time. So uh, I hope you all enjoy the song. This old body is weary. I can tell these passing days that the strength that keeps me going slowly dying away. My eyesight is fading, but my vision's clear as can be. Over yonder lies a country these old natural eyes can see. Oh yes, I know I'm a part of this plane. Don't cost on my seat like a little grain of sand. Oh, thank God for I love thee. He is the smallest cry. If I fall like a sparrow, so like an eagle when he flies. Now I can seem get excited about the things that happen here. Though sometimes my heart was sad and I often shed a tear. My desire to build a life here has long vanished away. And all things are just borrowed and I'm going home to stay. Oh yes, I know I'm a part of this plane. Don't toss on my sea like a little grain of sand. Oh, thank God for I love thee. He hears the smallest cry. If I fall like a sparrow, so like an eagle when he flies. I can run and not be weary. I can walk and think of. Don't complain for what I'm lacking. I just thank him for what I've got. Set his eye on the sparrow. When I leave here, you don't cry. I may sleep a while with Jesus. Like an eagle, I'll take my flight. Oh, yes, I know I'm a part of this plane. Don't toss on the sea like a little grain of sand. Oh, thank God for I love thee. He is a smallest cry. If I fall like a sparrow, I feel like an eagle when he flies. If I fall like a sparrow, so like an eagle when he flies. All right, thank you so much. Uh, the Monday uh, Family Gospel Singers from Liberty, Kentucky. Well, I keep forgetting my own mic. What about that? The Monday Family from... Uh, uh, Liberty, Kentucky. They do have CDs for sale. 606-787-2806. And uh, they'll be glad to hear from you if you want to call them and, and purchase their CDs. Well, they'll be happy to have that. So uh, we appreciate them driving a long way to be with us tonight. And so we trust they'll have a, a good trip home. All right, this is revival time. And so we have... Uh, uh, to preach for us tonight, we have uh, Pastor uh, Alan Ratliff from Wellington, Kentucky. He pastors the Tar Ridge Union Church, and the phone number is, uh, well, there's two. I am guess uh, either one of them. Okay, 606-768-3859. All right, and uh, so we... Uh, 
want to uh, uh, welcome uh, Pastor uh, Alan Ratliff right now. And you might see him on TV here uh, uh, reading the Word from time to time. So uh, let's, uh, let's go over for the message right now. Brother Alan Ratliff. I thank the Lord, Sister Margaret, for the opportunity to be here tonight and be part of the revival. You know, it seems like the spring and fall revival rolls around pretty quick, and and uh, the older you get, I guess, uh, the faster it seems like time's are moving. Me and Brother Bill was talking about how that knowledge had been increased in the last hundred years. You know, it seemed like they went for hundreds of years there without much knowledge on uh, how to do certain things, and then in the last hundred years, knowledge has really been increased, and of course, we're living in an age now when you can stand here in Batyville and speak to people uh, plumb on the other side of the world, you know, and uh, so that's making it possible for us to get the gospel out. And uh, he said, this gospel shall be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. So the sooner we get the gospel out to everyone and every nation, the sooner the Lord is going to come back for those that are ready. And uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm kind of looking forward to the new heaven and the new earth. The Bible says that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And I'm looking forward to being in that place myself because, you know, wickedness and, and uh, the devil has destroyed a lot in this earth and uh, is destroying a lot of people in this earth. But when we get to that new heaven and that new earth, there'll be no enemy there, there'll be no devil there to tempt us. Uh, you know, the Bible doesn't say a whole lot about what it's going to be like, but I believe it's going to be wonderful just to be in the presence of the Almighty God all the time. Tonight I've got a lot of verses, so I'll try not to do much talking and a whole lot of reading, uh, but I've got a lot of verses uh, that... I put at the top of the page, your choice. And God gives us a lot of choices. You know, He created the animals, and the animals don't have a lot of choices because man has dominion over the animals. But God gave man a lot of choices to make. And um, as we go through these verses, you'll see what I mean. It, uh, God said, choose who you'll serve, you know. So we've, we've got that choice. Uh, we can choose to serve the Lord and we can choose to walk with Him and keep His commandments and, and do what's right or we can choose to serve the devil. There was a man who wrote a song back in the 60s. He, he wrote a song that went something like this. He said, you, you might serve the devil or you might serve the Lord, but everybody is going to serve somebody. And that's true, you're either going to serve God or you're going to serve the devil. There's no in-between, there's no one else. And you get to choose which one you'll serve. Uh, I've heard people say, well, if I go to hell, there'll be a lot of other people, I won't be alone. You can guarantee that, that you will not be alone. There'll be multitudes, they'll be biting upon one another, they'll be screaming, there'll be uh, all kinds of evil there. And you can guarantee that if you choose to go to hell that you won't be alone. But if you choose to go to heaven, it's going to be totally different. And, uh, but it's still your choice. You know, uh, people say, well, God won't send me to hell. No, you choose either heaven or hell. And He's made it possible that we can choose. Now, I know this might be a little strange to start out like this, but this is... Uh, you know, I, I try to follow the leading of the Spirit. There's people listening tonight that needs to make the choice. You know, I don't know how many has been saved during this revival, but I thought on the way over here, Sister Margaret, we would like to turn the world upside down. We would like to see hundreds and thousands come to the Lord. But God will reach out there for just one soul. He will go to great length to reach one person. I think about how God has dealt with me over the years and how many times before I got saved that the Spirit of God spoke to my heart. I can't tell you how many times. There were several times that God spoke to me real plain, spoke to my heart, 
to come to Him. And you know, I believe tonight as you listen to this program, I believe the Lord is going to speak to your heart. And, but you still have the choice. It's still your choice whether you say, Yes, Lord, I will follow you, I will live for you, and I'll do what you want me to do. It's still your choice whether you do that or not. The first verses I'm going to start off with is found in Joshua chapter 24 and verse 14 and 15. It says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now those of you that's been in church a long time, you've heard that verse said a lot of times. What Joshua was saying to the children of Israel, he said, you choose who you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I'll tell you, it's one of the best things that you ever did when you make up your mind that you're going to serve God, that you and your house is going to serve Him. I'll tell you, He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of your time. Uh, You'll never find a friend like Jesus Christ. You'll never find anyone that will be able to help you like the Lord can help you. And when you make up your mind that me and my house, we're going to serve God, And you know, when you talk about serving somebody, you know, a lot of us have jobs and we have uh, bosses. We have people that tells us what to do. And you know, when you go on the job, you don't go there and you don't start telling them what you're going to do and and how you want to do it. You listen to the boss and he tells you what he wants done and then you do your best to do it. And the Lord spoke something to my heart a few months ago, very plain is that He doesn't work for us. We work for Him. It's His work. This, this station here is His work. And we work for Him. And as long as we'll do what God is asking us to do, everything goes just fine. Because He can look into the future. He knows what's ahead of us tomorrow. See, we just all we can see is what's going on right now, or we know what's happened in the past, but we don't know what tomorrow holds. But we're working for one that knows what tomorrow holds. And, you know, I thought about Christ being the head of the church. You know, there's only one church. I know there's thousands of denominations, there's thousands of beliefs and so on, but there's only one church, and Christ is the head of that church, and He sets us in that church. Once we get born again, we are born again, and we are set into the body of Christ, and Him being the head of that body, and we are put in there to work together with one another and to love one another and to do our very best to get this gospel out and to tell people just how good He is and to lift Him up. Everywhere we go, we have the opportunity to lift up the name that's above every name. There's no one like Jesus. You know, I know you look at the, the, the media today and you see what's on television on a lot of these channels and you would think the devil is winning. But I'm going to tell you, I've read this story, and it is true, and God confirms His Word, and the devil is not winning. He's only doing all the destruction that he can right now, but for those that trust in Him, we're on the winning side. We're serving one that's going to take us through. I'm trusting in Him with all my heart, my soul. The Bible says in Proverbs, it says, Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. That's hard to do sometimes. You want to lean to our own understanding. We want to look at the circumstances around us and we want to lean to our own understanding sometimes. But He said, Just trust me. Trust me with all your heart and with all your soul. You know, He will take care of us. I thought about the little woman in the book of Luke, how that she had had that infirmity for 18 years. 
And you know, she could have looked at the circumstances. And many people, when they've been sick a long time, they can't get their eyes off of the circumstance. But they, she could have looked at her circumstance and said, well, I've had this so long, and I've tried the physicians, I've tried everything, there's no use of me going down to where Jesus is. She could have looked at the circumstance and ter- talked herself out of even going to where he was. But she didn't look at the circumstance. She heard that there was a man that was healing the sick, and she made an effort and made up her mind that she was going to the place where he was at, and nothing wasn't going to stop her. And when she got there and she touched him, she got what she came for. You know, sometimes you've got to make up your mind, and it's your choice. You can choose what you think on. You can choose how you think. And God, we, we do it by the help of the Lord. It's not us doing it. it we can't save ourselves. We can't keep ourselves. But He is supplying everything that we need. If we will turn to Him and trust Him, God is supplying everything we need. Remember I said He's the boss. He's the one that's leading us. The Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So He's the one that's leading us. All we got to do is be willing to follow Him. And see, Joshua, even hundreds of years ago, he knew that as far as him and his house, he had seen the miracles of God. He had seen what God did for Moses, how He performed the miracles, and that's who he wanted to serve. So he knew that he could trust God. And he said, as far as me and my house, he said, we will serve the Lord. But it's still your choice. In Romans chapter 6, I'm going to read just a few verses here. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 12 through 18 it says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey the lust thereof. Neither yield yourself, your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. When it's talking about yielding yourself and your members, it's talking about your body. You yield your hands, your feet, your tongue, your heart, you yield all that to the Lord and say, Lord, here it is, use me. Disuse me. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that you were the servants of but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Verse sixteen says, Know ye not to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So right there shows you that we have the choice. We can yield yield to the Lord or we can yield to the devil. But you can't serve two masters. You've got to choose which one you want to serve. But he said, whoever you yield yourself to, whoever you turn yourself over to, just like I was talking about that song, You may serve the devil or you may serve the Lord, but you're still going to serve somebody. And whoever you yield yourself to, that's whose servant you are. You know, there's a lot of people that are trying to serve both masters. They'll go to church pretty regular, but through the week they try to become the servant of sin and they haven't got rid of the sin. But you know, the Lord asks us to die out to sin. That's what we do. He said, repent and be baptized for the remission of sin. And He shall give you the gift of the Holy Ghost. But He asks us to die out to sin. 
That's what the form of baptism is all about, is when we go down into the water and come up out of the water, we're supposed to come up a new creature in Christ. Not to serve sin any longer, not to try to live in sin and do the things that the flesh wants to do, but to live in righteousness and do what God's called us to do. And I'll tell you, there's probably no uh, more miserable people in the world than those that's trying to straddle a fence. Those that are trying to live and go to church on the weekend and then go back out and live in sin through the week, they're probably some of the most miserable people that you'll find in the world. You know, even in Revelations, the Lord said, I would that you was either hot or cold. He said, because you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. In other words, it makes him sick, you know, for, to, uh, for someone to try to serve two masters. But we need to make up our mind whether we're going to serve God and walk in righteousness and holiness and do what's right, or we're going to serve the devil. You know, you can find the reward for either one. You can find out in this book what happens to the wicked and you can find out what happens to the righteous in the end. I want to be one of those that's made clean through the blood, don't you? I want to be one that's been washed, that has the garment on, has the robe of righteousness on. When he comes, I want to be able to hear him say, Enter in, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things and I'll make you ruler over many. That's what I want to hear. You know, I think about it pretty often because we don't know how long we have on this earth to work for the Lord, but I want to get done all that I possibly can for the Lord, don't you? I want to spend my days wisely. I want to spend the time wisely and try to reach everyone that I can. For for that's where the reward is going to be. He said, lay up your treasures in heaven. You know, I don't worry too much about things down here, but I want a reward when I get there. I want to work for Him while it's day. You know, we have an opportunity right now. We've been put in a place that we have an opportunity to see people come to the Lord. And Brother Bill was talking about how it blesses him to see that cross come up on the screen there that another person has come in. They have dodged hell and all the torment and all the pain and all the things that's going to be there and they have given their life to the Lord. And that's what we want to see tonight. We're not here to entertain you. We're here because God has called us to warn you to stay out of that place. You don't have to go there. God has made it possible that we can go to heaven, that we can live eternally with Him in a wonderful place, and you don't have to go there. See, God supplied the sacrifice. He supplied the sacrifice. He sent His Son to die for you and I so that we don't have to be lost. Oh, i tell you what, if people could only feel the presence of God, if they can feel how good it feels to have that burden lifted off of them and be born again as the Bible describes it. You know, Jesus told Nicodemus, He said, you must be born again. Well, we, we was born the first time and we, we know what's happened since then, but when you're born again, we are born into the body of Christ never to die anymore. Now, we'll leave this body one day. We'll be separated from this body to go on and to get another body, but we never have to worry about death. Those that are born again and ready, they don't have to fear death. You know, if you know the Lord, you don't have to fear what's coming ahead because you're ready to go and you're walking with Him. There's nothing better than walking with the Lord. Choose to walk with Him. He said in 2 Corinthians, verse 16, remember the verse there that we just read, Know ye not to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. And in 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, and verse 16, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Now they're talking about the temple being your body. For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. 
Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now think about that. He's saying, come out from among the world and be a separate people. I believe as we're tried in this last day before the coming of the Lord, I believe you're going to know those that are Christians and those that are just saying they're Christians. Those that have a form of godliness and those that really are godly. I believe that the trying of our faith and the trouble that's coming up on this world before the return of Jesus, I believe it's going to, you're going to know which ones are true and which ones are not true. Of course, the Lord already knows because He's looking at our heart. But He says, For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Now just think about offering yourself. He said to offer yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. But have you ever done that? Have you ever offered yourself to the Lord and said, Lord, here I am. You know, a lot of times people wait till they get on the very bottom. They don't have anywhere else to go. And then they'll turn over their life to the Lord. And that's okay. He'll take you like that. Most of us have to reach the bottom sometimes before we ever cry out loud enough and cry out to the Lord. But he said, we're the temple of God. Once you get born again, we've been talking about this in church a lot. If Christians only knew who they were, they would live in a lot different place because they would know what belongs to them as being children of God. They would know what kind of power they have as children of God. They would know the inheritance that they have as children of God. Many people go to church, but they don't realize what happened when they got born again. They don't realize how much of a change that took place. But He wants us to be the temple that He can live in. He will send His Spirit right into your heart. And you can live and walk and be a temple of God. You can be a witness. You can be a light to people. You can tell people how good God is. How He reached down and picked you up. Can't you imagine the little woman that had been sick for 18 years? What a story she had to tell after she got healed. How she told about going down to the to the meeting where Jesus was and touching Him. And all of a sudden, she was instantly healed. Boy, we've been blessed to see a lot of healings. And since I've been serving the Lord, I've seen uh, hundreds and hundreds of people healed. And I thank God for that because it lets you know that God is the same. Of course, the Bible says that. The Bible says that in Hebrews. It says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But sometimes it takes a little bit to get through to us. But I tell you what, when you get to see in the miracles of God, you get to see the power of God, you get to see Him heal somebody that the doctors have given up on, or you get to see Him raise somebody up, I tell you, it blesses you, it touches you, and you know that the God you're serving is real. He's real tonight, friends. If you're sitting there and you're in need, God is what you need. If you're sitting there and you're sick in your body, you need to trust God. You need to call upon Him and say, Lord, this preacher is telling me that your word says that you will heal me. And I want to believe that word. You know, faith comes by hearing. And we need to hear the word of God. We need to get it down on the inside of our heart and believe what God says. You can trust Him. His word is an everlasting word. He's not going to change it. He's one that you can trust. But then he says that we are the temple of God and that God will live in us and walk in us. In James chapter 4 and verse 7 it says, Submit yourselves to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit yourself to God. That's your choice. That's up to you. See, a lot of people are waiting on God to do everything. God's waiting on us. He said, submit yourself to God. Turn yourself over to Him. Trust Him with all your heart. Don't lean to your understanding. Just turn it over to God. Say, God, here I am. You know, a lot of times I say, here I am, Lord, what's left of me? 
because sometimes you feel like the world has just about destroyed you. But turn over your life to God and God can help you in a lot of ways. He said, draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. I wrote these verses down because I didn't want to have to take time to to go through and, and, and turn to every one of them in the Bible. But if we'll draw nigh to Him, He'll draw nigh to us. If we'll submit ourselves to Him and resist the devil, then the devil will flee from us. That's where our trouble comes from, is from the devil. He's out to steal and kill and destroy, to tear up homes, to destroy lives. You know, the drugs and the alcohol, He uses so many things to destroy people. He uses deception. He'll deceive you into believing things that's not right. In Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26, it says, If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in His sight, and give ears to His commandments, and keep all His statutes, I will put none of the diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. He said, if you will. If you will. You can find that a lot of places in the Bible, that big word, if. If you will. If you will hearken to the voice of the Lord. If you will do that which is right. He furnishes everything that we need to do it. He furnishes the blood so that we can be cleansed. He furnishes us His Spirit so that we can walk in newness of life. He, he paid for everything and He furnishes everything, but He does not force it on you. It's still your choice whether you want to serve Him or not. And He said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in His sight. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, He said, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we will confess our sins, that's how easy it is to get saved, is all you have to do is confess your sins. Don't try to hold some of them back. God looks right into our heart. You know, man looks on the outside. He judges from the outside. But God looks right on our heart. He knows what's in our heart. He knows what's in our mind. You might as well just confess it all to Him because He knows already. But all He's asking us is to come to Him and confess our sins. And He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a Savior. What a friend. You'll not find any offer like that from anybody else because there's no other name that can save you. There's no other sacrifice that can do that for you. It's kind of like the song says, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It takes the shedding of blood, and He shed it for you. And I thought, you know, He will reach out there for just one soul. He will reach out there he would have shed His blood for you if you'd have been the only lost person. Of course, He did it for everyone. But He would have done it for you or for me. That's how much He loved us. He would have shed His blood. But you know, even though He did it for the whole world, there's hundreds and thousands and thousands that is not taking advantage of the blood. They're not taking advantage of what He did. They're not saying, Yes, Lord, I'll serve you. I want to belong to you. I want to confess my sins. And I want to come to you. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, it said, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. That's the kind of friend He is. But see, He's asking something of us there, isn't He? In every one of these verses, you'll notice He's asking something out of us. He's asking us to humble ourselves. He's asking us to trust Him. He's asking us to cast our cares upon Him. God don't want us to be burdened down. 
He don't want us to be loaded down with troubles and cares of this life. He wants us to trust Him. He wants us to cast our cares upon Him and let Him take care of them. I tell you, Sister Margaret, I walked for years trying to take care of things myself. It's actually just been in the last few years that I have realized that I was carrying things that I shouldn't have been carrying. I was burdened down with things I should have been trusting Him with. I tell you, when you don't trust the Lord and you trust in yourself too much, you just stay burdened down. But if you will cast your cares upon Him and trust Him to take care of you, He's wanting to take care of us, not just spiritually, but He wants to heal our bodies. He wants to supply every need. Uh, I believe John said, My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So He wants to take care of us, both spiritually and physically and financially. He wants us to trust Him. He wants us to cast our cares upon Him. In Revelations chapter 22 and verse 17, it said, Let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. That is what it's all about right there. He said, Whosoever will. You think about the millions and the millions of people in the world today. And yet any one of them today when the Spirit speaks to them and draws them, all they have to do is say, Yes, Lord. That's how simple it is. I'll come to the living water. You know, he told the woman at the well, he said, If you had asked me, I would have given you living water that you wouldn't thirst anymore. Wouldn't you like to have some of that tonight? Wouldn't you like to have some of that living water that is on the inside of you? Wouldn't you like for the Lord to put His Spirit down on the inside of you tonight and deliver you from all that sin and all that trouble that you've been under? I'll tell you, He's the greatest one that you could ever call upon. Romans 10.13 said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then the verse that I read there or quoted there earlier, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. All you have to do tonight to get help from the God in heaven is to call upon Him. That's all you have to do is say, Lord, I need Your help. All you got to do is humble yourself. Say, God, I need You. I remember in 1979, in front of an old brown chair in my living room, I kneeled down and I said, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And that's all I remember saying. And He's helped me ever since. I'll tell you what. You can't find a better friend than Jesus. You'll not find no one that cares about you like He does. You'll not find no one that has laid down His life and shed His blood so that you could be saved. He loves you tonight. He wants you to be well and healthy. He wants to touch your body. He wants to heal you because He loved you. The Bible says in Acts 10.38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. I challenge you to read the Gospels and read about Jesus, how they recorded what He did, how He went through the land healing the sick and casting out the devils and opening the blind eyes. And everyone that would receive Him and believe upon Him could be saved. That's what He came for. He's the Redeemer. He's the Healer. He's the Savior. He's the one that you can put your trust in like no one else. I believe there's people listening tonight that the Spirit of God is dealing with and you know in your heart that you need to make the choice to trust the Lord. You know that's the answer because you've tried just about everything else and nothing has been able to help you. See, we're created in the image of God and in His likeness. And there's a void in us. If we don't have the Spirit of God on the inside of us, there's a void that money nor anything else can satisfy. It doesn't matter. You might own thousands of acres. You might have lots of money in the bank and the finest things that, that they can buy. But if you don't have Jesus, there's still an emptiness there. There's something there that's just, you're never satisfied. 
But I'll tell you, you can have Jesus and you don't have to have much else to be satisfied. Apostle Paul said, I find that whatever condition I'm in to be content because he knew in whom he had believed. He said, oh, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Just to know Jesus and his resurrecting power. He loves you tonight. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to come to him and receive him. Would you pray with me? As I believe that there's people listening that if you'll reach out and, and ask Him for your healing, that God's going to touch you. If you'll reach out and ask for His help, you know the greatest thing is the Word of God. There's power in the Word of God. That's the reason the devil fights so hard. He doesn't want this Word to go out from this hilltop. He doesn't want it to go out from anywhere because he knows there's power in this Word. The Bible says He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. This Word has power. If you have little children, the greatest thing you can do for them is to make sure that you get the Word of God in them when they're little. Whether you have to read it to them yourself or take them to a church and let them be taught in Sunday school, the greatest thing you can do for a little child is to make sure they get to hear the Word of God. Because this Word will stay with them. It will go with them. Pray with me tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You, Lord, that You have made it possible that we can come to You for whatever we have need of, whether it's healing in our body or salvation for our soul, whether it's a financial need or whatever need we have, You have asked us to trust You and cast our cares upon You. Father, I ask you tonight, God, there's people listening that is right at the verge of making the right choice. And I pray, God, that you open up their eyes and let them see what hell is going to be like and what heaven's going to be like. God, open up their eyes and let them see the need that they have for you and that there is no other way to make it other than through and by the blood of Jesus. Father, I ask you tonight, God, to touch those that are trusting you for their healing, Lord. Help them not to waver. Lord, help them to stand upon these verses. Believe in their heart and confess it with their mouth. And stand upon these verses because I know it works. I know your word will bring it to pass. Lord, we just thank you tonight for what you're doing. We thank you for all the blessings and what you're doing for those that are listening. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for that uh, good message. We've been listening to uh, Pastor Alan Radliff, uh, pastor of the Tar Ridge Union Church over in Wellington, in uh, I think that's in Menifee County. The phone number to get in touch with him is 606-768-3859. And... Uh, uh, they'll be glad to hear from you and uh, tell you about the church and so forth. All right, we uh, uh, we have uh, uh, Robin. If you want, um, Robin's going to come up and uh, with with Alan, and we're going to uh, pray over these requests, and uh, uh, then we'll. Uh, uh, but uh, first, let me let me tell you about. Uh, once again, if you have uh, been missing WLJC from some of the uh, Time Warner uh, cable system, uh, there's good news. They have a special box that is free to you if you will go and uh, uh, just uh, sign up for it. And even if you cannot go, they will even try to mail it to you and they are going to do all they can to help you become digital like uh, all of the TV stations have uh, had to change. And so they're, they're wanting the customers to so they can get a better picture. And so uh, if you're missing WLJC or no, well, be sure and take that number down and uh, get in touch with them and go pick up your box. It will be free. Uh, and they will not charge you anything until January 2015. If you're 
uh, the person you talk to tells you anything other than that, be sure and call us and leave us your name and phone number because we need to get back uh, about that. All right, uh, it's just another way that we can continue to get the gospel out and with a better uh, reception. All right, uh, if uh, uh, you want to do that, well, we'd appreciate it. Well, we have Robin, uh, Alan's wife, has come up to uh, join with us, and we're going to uh, we're going to be uh, praying over the the request. And uh, did you get your mic? You did. did. Um, she used to be a little on the shy side, but she's getting better. She <laughs> <laughs> not much. <laughs> and uh, but anyway, uh, uh, this couple of pastors, a, a good little church over there, a very, a very nice little church, and got some good people in there. Yeah, and sure so that, uh, yeah. that was a good message. Robin, what, uh, you have something to say before you uh, oh, need just, to pray over the request? No, I just thank the Lord, though, for always being there for us. He's, he's been there for us numerous times. He's healed our bodies and saved us and kept us healthy and I, I praise the Lord for that and uh, I just praise him for always being there for us okay all right he is good to us well would you all uh, I'd like to anoint those and and uh, lead us in prayer for him uh, I noticed one of them said this have an open heart surgery on a coming Monday and so they definitely need need to be remembered okay we got about three minutes Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, Lord, for these requests that's been called in tonight, Lord, we ask that you move upon them. They have had faith enough to call in the request, and we just ask God that as we bind together here, you said if any two shall ask anything, that it shall be done. And Lord, we're asking in faith, believing that you are going to move upon these requests. Lord, you're going to touch those that are sick and those that are in the hospital. Lord, those that their heart is broken, God, we ask you to mend that heart. Help them, Lord, to come out and know that you are the deliverer. You are the healer. You are the one that can bring them out of depression. Lord, you are the one that can deliver their soul and their body. Lord, help them to realize how much you care about them, how much that you have paid the price so that they can have life and have it abundantly. Father, we just ask you to move and touch those that's lost out there, that's listening, that hears this program. God, I ask you to speak to the lost. God, bring them in before it's too late. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you, God, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for this station that is able to go out night after night. Lord, you have placed it here and we're only instruments in your hand. But I pray an anointing upon this in the coming year, Lord, that you would anoint this station to reach more souls than it's ever reached before. Yes, God, I pray for the staff that you would anoint them and give them strength, Lord, to be able to do the work you've called them to do. Lord, we pray for protection upon this place. We love you and praise you and ask all these things in the name that's above every name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. That uh, was very good. We have one more night of uh, revival, and then on Monday we will start the fall telethon. We really need for you to be praying with us and standing with us. The needs are always about the same, and so uh, the Lord has always been here to help us, and we're depending on Him uh, again for this time. But uh, so just keep praying and stay tuned and we'll, we'll all together, we'll do what we can. Then someday, as the song says, then we'll be glad we've lived for Jesus. Amen. From all of us here, we want to say good night and God bless you.
Oh, 